Hello friends, welcome to this next video on complex analysis. In this video, we will study very important topic which is stereographic projection. Stereographic projection. Okay. So basically, till now we know that the set of complex as points in the xy plane, right? Okay, so basically we want like uh, uh, we can treat every point z which is x plus iota y as a point in this x y plane with x as its x coordinate and y as its y coordinates okay y coordinate so uh, and now we will we, we would like to see this plane as something which is compact okay so basically uh, this thing this stereographic projection this thing came from cartographers. Cartographers, these are the people who make maps. Okay. These are the people who make maps. Okay. So, when it was started, it has nothing to do with complex analysis. When this stereographic projection was started, it had not, nothing to do with complex analysis. So, basically, these cartographers, what they want is... Let me go to a new slide. Because earth is spherical, okay, and the paper maps which we make, they are uh, on the uh, page of a paper, okay, so they are 2D, right. So what they want, they want to somehow uh, see the points on the surface of the sphere as points in the plane, right. So they want to relate points on the surface of the sphere With points on the plane of a paper, right? This is what they want. They want a system which relate every point on the surface of the sphere to a unique point in this plane, right? This is what cartographers want, okay? And they have they have developed so many methods to do so, okay? They, there are many techniques for doing so. Okay, and one of the technique is stereographic projection. Okay, in ma making maps, there are better techniques than this stereographic projection. So these projections are not as such used in the map which we see daily, right? But this particular stereographic projection turns out to be very important in case of complex analysis. Okay, so why uh, like it, it's just that uh, this is our complex plane and we can visualize or we can have an idea of the points on this complex plane as points on the sphere right and that is via this stereographic projection right so let us see what is that stereographic projection is okay so suppose we have a sphere unit sphere okay this is my unit sphere x x square plus y square plus z square is equal to 1. Suppose this is the unit sphere which we have and suppose we have this is the equator of this sphere. Okay. Let me first draw the plane, equator plane. So this is the equatorial plane of the sphere. Suppose this is the equatorial plane of the sphere. What does that mean? It means that this plane will divide the sphere into two equal parts. Okay. So, suppose this is my z axis. Okay. And suppose this is your x axis and somewhere here is your y axis. So, basically this plane is x y plane. This plane is x y plane and we will think of it as a complex plane. We will think of it as complex plane right okay now this point that north pole of the sphere this point is x is 0 y is 0 z is 1 so this is north pole of the plane uh, sphere okay now what we want is we have a point here okay z because this point is in the complex plane so we will call it 
not z we should not write it z now it is this point is some p which is x plus eta y right we want to find out a unique point on the sphere okay suppose that is capital p right we want to find out a unique point on the sphere which is which we can relate to this point small p on the plane we want to have a technique which will do this thing right so what is the technique technique is you take a unit point in the plane suppose this is p right the technique is take a point p in the plane okay now join this point with the north pole of the sphere join n and p okay so this line the line you will get the line and p will intersect will meet the sphere at a unique point okay this line you take a point on the plane and then join it with the north pole of the sphere you will get a line segment and that line segment will intersect will meet the sphere at a unique point call that point as p call that point as capital p okay so capital p is called stereographic projection of small p stereographic projection of small p okay and it can be proved that it can be it is easy to see that this point will be unique suppose i have okay this is your circle where this equatorial plane is intersecting the sphere right if i have a point here on the surface of the plane then i want the this is my small p i want the corresponding capital p i will join it with this north pole okay i will extend my line segment to see where it intersects the sphere this is my capital p right and suppose i have a point here on the circle this circle is x square plus y square is equal to 1 this is unit circle right so if uh, if i have a point on the circle then if i join it with north pole this point is on the circle as well as on the sphere okay so this is this because this is the surface of sphere also right so if you join it with the north pole right after that this line will never meet the sphere so this is the only point so this point will be projected to itself right so projection of all the points which are on the unit circle okay z mod z is equal to 1 this is the unit circle we are writing in terms of complex uh, uh, numbers right capital uh, sorry not i should not write now mod z because z is my z axis suppose my uh, complex number is denoted by p so all the uh, points which are on the circle mod p is equal to 1 they will be mapped to itself okay these points will be mapped to itself okay now if the point is outside the circle okay this point we have seen this point is mapped to the point here okay and similarly this point will be mapped somewhere here so these points which are outside outside this unit circle are mapped to the northern hemisphere and this points which are inside the circle this point for example they are mapped to the southern hemisphere of the sphere okay so in this way this is the technique which you have to use you have what you have to do take a point in the plane join it with the north pole of the sphere and make it make a line segment and that line segment will meet the sphere at a unique point and you, that unique point is called the stereographic projection of the point which you have taken in the plane now we would like to have mathematical formulas to convert like this small p into capital p and vice versa this capital p into small p let us do that okay so what we have we have this sphere okay and we have this i'm sorry let me do it we have this plane this is our complex plane okay this is our unit sphere right this is the north pole n 
okay this is the point p right and suppose and what we have to do we have to join these this with the line and we are looking for this point capital p right okay so let small p be given okay it means that it is something like x comma y comma 0 this thing you know right its coordinates will be x comma y comma 0 because z coordinate will be 0 you want what is capital p right suppose this capital p okay we want to co compute what is this capital p so this point is 0 comma 0 comma 1 n is 0 comma 0 comma 1 and p is x comma y comma 0 now you know how to write the equation of a line joining two points so basically what i am doing i am to try i am trying to find out this equation of this line what is the equation of this line okay so that line is we know that if you are given x1 x2 x1 y1 z1 x2 y2 z2 then the equation of the line is x minus x1 upon x2 minus x1 is equal to y minus y1 upon y2 minus y1 is equal to z minus z1 upon z2 minus z1. This is the equation of the line joining these two points. Okay. So similarly, let's write down the equation here. So we have this equation x minus x1 that is 0 upon x2 minus x1. So that is x minus 0 is equal to capital Y minus y1 that is 0 upon y2 minus y1 is equal to capital z minus 1 upon 0 minus 1 okay so this is the equation of this line equation of np okay so we want to know how a point looks on this line okay so let this is equal to some constant lambda so you will get x is equal to x lambda y is equal to y lambda and z is equal to 1 minus lambda so any point on this line looks like x lambda y lambda 1 minus lambda where x and y are fixed because they are the coordinates of the point small p and that small p is fixed but this lambda can vary okay so basically what is happening is you if you will change the lambda you will have different points on the line and we are looking for that value of lambda for which the point is on the sphere x square plus y square plus z square is equal to 1. Okay. So don't confuse it with this small x. This is general. So I will write it capital X square plus capital Y square plus capital Z square is equal to 1. So I am looking for that value of lambda for which this condition is satisfied. Okay. So what we have right now. We have this thing that we any point on the line. Let me draw it again. this is your p this is your n okay equation of np any point on the line np is x is equal to x lambda y is equal to y lambda z is equal to 1 minus lambda okay and this is the equation this is the point on this line and we want x square plus y square plus z square is equal to 1 so it means that we want x lambda square plus y lambda square plus 1 minus lambda square is equal to 1 so it means that you have x square plus y square plus plus 1 times lambda square. Okay, this is x square lambda square, y square lambda square and 1 lambda square from here. So, I am taking lambda square out. So, you will have x square plus y square plus 1. And here, two more terms will be there. That will be 1 minus 2 lambda is equal to 1. So, this 1, 1 and ca will cancel. So, you can take lambda out. So, you have, this is actually your p point is complex number so your p is x plus iota y so mod p will be x square plus y square square root so mod p square will be x square plus y square so this is basically mod p square plus 1 minus times lambda minus 2 is equal to 0 so you get lambda is equal to 0 or lambda is equal to 2 upon mod p square plus 1 okay now when lambda is equal to 0 your point this is your point your point will be 0 x will be 0 y will be 0 z will be 1 okay this corresponds to the point n this is this point right okay because this is also a point which is on the line and on the sphere right so we don't want this right 
so we will take this value of lambda okay so we have this value of lambda so with this value of lambda what are our coordinates okay so our coordinates will be with this value of lambda this x will be x into lambda so you will have 2 times x upon mod p square plus 1 and what is x x is real of p so it is 2 times real of p upon mod p square plus 1 this is your x okay and similarly your y will be 2 times y y is imaginary of p so 2 times imaginary of p upon norm mod p square plus 1 and your z is 1 minus lambda so this is 1 minus 2 upon mod p square plus 1 so this is mod p square minus 1 upon mod p square plus 1 okay so basically what we get is we have this point p x plus eta y in the plane complex plane and the corresponding point on the sphere what is that point that point is capital x is equal to 2 real of p upon mod p square plus 1 y is equal to 2 imaginary of p upon mod p square plus 1 and z is equal to mod p square minus 1 upon mod p square plus 1 so this is the technique of going from the plane to the sphere okay this is the stereographic projection okay so let us just do for one complex number let us see what is that stereographic projection so let us you take this example 1 plus root 3 iota so you have this point in the plane okay and you want the corresponding point on the sphere unit sphere right so it will be 2 times real of this is your p p upon norm mod p square plus 1 2 times real of p upon mod p, sorry imaginary of p upon mod p square plus 1 comma mod p square minus 1 upon mod p square plus 1 so here what is your mod p mod p is 1 plus 3 that is square root that is 2 so mod p square is actually 4 because we not need mod p square here 2 into real of p is 1 upon 4 plus 1 this is 2 into imaginary of p is root 3 upon 4 plus 1 comma this is 4 minus 1 upon 4 plus 1 so this is 2 upon 5 2 root 3 upon 5 and this is 3 upon 5 so this is the point which is uniquely related to this point okay by other stereographic projection okay now let us do the other way okay now we went from plane to sphere okay now what is the way back okay suppose you are given this point x1 y1 z1 on the sphere and you want the corresponding point here x comma y this point will be p actually that will be x plus eta y okay let us do that so let us again draw our picture this is our sphere this is our equatorial plane or the complex plane right this is our north pole okay zero, this we know zero zero comma one and we are given some point here okay that point is fixed and we want this point what is this point okay so basically we are saying that okay we are given this point this point is fixed x1 comma y1 comma z1 okay already we know the equation suppose this point is x comma y comma 0 right then already we know that any point on the line looks like x is equal to x lambda y is equal to y lambda and z is equal to 1, my, 1 minus lambda okay as we change lambda the points will change and we are looking for the value of lambda for which the point is this okay x1 y1 z1 so what we want we want x1 is equal to x lambda y1 is equal to y lambda and z1 is equal to 1 minus lambda so from here you get z1 is equal to sorry from here you get 
lambda is equal to 1 minus z1. So you get x1 is equal to, this is, uh, you get, uh, we need x, sorry, okay. So from here you will get x is equal to x1 upon lambda, lambda is 1 minus z1. And from here you get y is equal to y1 upon lambda and lambda is 1 minus z, okay. So it means that if you take a point x1, y1, z1 on the sphere, the corresponding point on the plane will be x1 upon 1 minus z1, y1 upon 1 minus z1, comma, obviously 0. Z coordinate is 0, okay. So basically what we have, we have this thing that if you start with the point x1, y1, z1 on the sphere, okay, you will reach at this complex number x1 upon 1 minus z1 plus eta times y1 upon 1 minus z1. Now you have to note that if you start with this point 0 comma 0 comma 1 which is the north pole okay of the sphere then where you will reach you will reach 1 uh, uh, 0 upon 1 minus 1 plus eta times 0 upon 1 minus 1. So we don't get a sensible number here. Okay. So actually we think of this north pole actually okay I'll I'll show you. This is your sphere, okay. This is your plane, okay. This is your unit sphere, and here is your north pole, okay. And this pole, po uh, this pole is not corresponding to any point on the plane, okay. And also we have seen that this is a unit circle, and these points inside are mapped to the south pole, uh, southern hemisphere, and po points which are outside they are mapped to the northern hemisphere okay now if the point is here somewhere very near to this circle mod z is equal to 1 or i should say mod p is equal to 1 that point will be somewhere mapped here okay as you move away from the circle or as you move away okay in this plane the points will come closer to this north pole okay but there is no point in this plane which is actually corresponding to this north pole so what we think is that point is actually infinity. So this north pole is uh, assumed to be infinity of the complex plane. Okay. So what we say, like you, what you can think of, like physically, you put a thread at the end of the plane some, somehow. You go to the infinity and put a thread around like this everywhere in the plane and then you have to snatch that thread you will get a sphere and that that this thing this thing when you will snatch it okay it will be coming as the north pole of the sphere right so this north pole is somehow assumed to be the infinity of the complex plane so let us let us just have a summary okay so we have a sphere and we have a plane okay so if uh, this is a unit sphere, this is a, a complex plane. Okay, this is a unit sphere. Uh, so if you want to go from a point x1, y1, z1 to here, that point will be x1 upon 1 minus z1 plus eta times y1 upon 1 minus z1. Okay. And if you want to go from here to here, okay, here on the sphere, okay, here you have this point x comma, y comma 0 which is your actually complex number x plus eta y right that point here is 2 times real of p upon mod p square plus 1 2 times imaginary of p upon mod p square plus 1 mod p square minus 1 upon mod p square plus 1 okay these are two things and this north pole is somehow assumed to be infinity of the complex plane right okay and one more thing that all the points here okay they are mapped to southern hemisphere points here they are mapped to northern hemisphere these points on the circle remain points on the circle remain on the circle 
they are not projected anywhere else okay so this is a summary and this is a stereographic projection we will use it again and again thank you